All right, music fans, welcome back. Harmless Dave here talking real music in real time for a few real people out there just like you and just like me. Before I get going on this video, this puppy arrived in the mail yesterday. <laughs> Been following this band for a couple of years now. And if you like West Coast music, if you like the sounds of Steely Dan, uh, Airplay, uh, Toto, Chicago during their David Foster period, uh, page 99. This thing is as good of a West Coast record as you're going to hear. Uh, Bill Champlin, formerly of Chicago, is singing on this record. And um, nice packaging here. Autographed copy, too. Uh, for imagination's sake, for imagination's sake, page 99. I've listened to this from start to finish. And again, if you like that West Coast sound, uh, laid back influences with both R&B and jazz and rock and pop, it's all there and it is really, really well done. All right. So on this video, I want to talk about um, Mick Jagger versus Paul McCartney. Uh, it's Amazing. The Rolling Stones played a gig last night in Hyde Park and they just sound amazing. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I'm trying to find fault with it. I'm actually trying to pick it apart. And I'm like, how are they doing this at their age? Mick Jagger. The only thing I worry about with Mick Jagger is I think he needs to eat some food. All right. I just, the legs are becoming, you know, like pelican sized legs he's just kind of doing his moves like jagger routine but i don't recall mick jagger looking this um emaciated i think is a word that comes to mind maybe he's just trying to be super healthy with you know zero percent body fat but i think he could use to put on a couple of pounds i believe he's 78 years old could be 77, 79. He's in that vicinity. Paul McCartney just turned 80, right? And comparing Paul McCartney with Mick Jagger, and a lot of the people who like the Beatles don't like the Stones. And a lot of people who, you know, like the Stones don't like the Beatles. It's kind of weird. I mean, I appreciate both bands and they both have a place in rock history. And you're probably going to think I'm a little bit nuts here, but the Rolling Stones, due to longevity, for me, are the greatest rock band in history for longevity. Now, you may say, well, the Beatles were, were more creative in a short period of time, and they impacted everybody around them, including the Stones, right? The Stones were doing Beatles songs and so forth, and they were, uh, you know, fierce rivals back in the day, but... Um, Mick Jagger said it recently, like, look, you know, these guys didn't really tour all that much. You know, they broke up. And so we kept going. I mean, the Stones were a force during the 1970s. And Paul McCartney at that point, uh, as well as the other Beatles, had gone solo. Um, Keith Richards, Ronnie Wood, um, Steve Jordan now playing drums, I believe, for the Stones. But uh, Charlie Watts, obviously, a force of nature up until his passing. Uh, I just think the Stones, pound for pound, right? Uh, and also, even though Mick doesn't weigh a lot, uh, and based on longevity, you may say their catalog isn't as strong as the Beatles. Well, you have a lot more to choose from with the Stones. I mean, you've got decades worth of material, including recent material that is very, very good. Now, Here's where things really, I think, diverge. Paul McCartney's singing voice has changed dramatically. I listen to Mick Jagger, and I think to myself, this could be any decade for the Stones. Maybe not the 60s, but any time after that, you listen to Mick Jagger, and you go, man, his vocals are so well-preserved. Now, Again, people will accuse everybody of using technology, like the Stones are using a vocal. No, nah, no, nah. the Stones don't do vocal tracks. They don't do um, music tracks. I, I don't think so. I mean, I could be wrong, but everything sounds very live, very authentic, 
Uh, each time they go out, it's a unique take on a classic song. I was listening to uh, Tumbling Dice. And yeah, the Stones have a very big roadshow. They've got great background singers. Um, this is a well-oiled machine. And it's bizarre because I just never thought these guys at their age would be this viable still, but they just sound fantastic. And, you know, you put Paul McCartney in his current incarnation with his current band. And by the way, his band is good. His band tends to insulate the vocals, meaning that they all kind of help Paul sing these songs. Whereas Mick is out there all by himself. He's not getting any help from Keith Richards, right? Because how much do we want to hear Keith sing? Although I don't mind hearing Keith sing. I'm kind of weird that way. But <laughs> it's not like Mick is being drowned out by all the singers. He's out there and he's on his own for most of it. And he sounds really good. Paul McCartney at this stage, he needs a little help from his friends. Sorry, I had to use that. Um, and comparing the two, you've got to give uh, Mick Jagger um, the edge. He's just a better singer at this stage in his life and really shows absolutely no wear and tear vocally. It's, it's again, one of those rock and roll freak of nature moments. You know, you listen to Mickey Thomas from Starship. You listen to certain people, Paul Rogers comes to mind and they're in really good shape vocally. Uh, and I'm not sure what, uh, you know, it's just Robin McCauley. There's another guy who's just insane. I don't understand how he sounds the way he sounds. In fact, some people have said that Robin McCauley sounds better now than he did 30 years ago. I would say with Mick Jagger, it's probably the same. He sounds about the same as he did 30 years ago, which is very impressive. Paul McCartney, not so much. Like I said, about maybe eight to 10 years ago, I would say Paul was still a really great singer live. But, you know, again, this is not his fault. It's aging. He's 80 years old. It's kind of weird to expect people to sound the same. But, you know, I'm just doing the A-B comparison. Mick Jagger against Paul McCartney. There's been a little bit of trash talk in the last year or two between the two. You know, hey, you know, the Beatles were a really diverse, interesting band where the Stones were just a blues band. That's what McCartney essentially said. And Mick Jagger fired back and said, well, we're still the best rock band ever. You guys kind of quit in 1971 or whatever. You guys just quit. So <laughs> we're, we've been going strong uh, since that time. And you got to give credit where credit is due. And in this case, I think the Stones uh, are just a great band and deserve I think recognition as the greatest rock band ever. They just do. I'm sorry. I mean, listening to how great they are even today, I think really cements that status. Whereas the Beatles were probably the most influential band ever. And if they had continued on in the seventies and beyond, who knows, who knows? I mean, it would hard, it'd be hard for them to top themselves. And I think with the Stones, did was different. They were like, we're not going to top ourselves. We're just going to continue to be ourselves. And I think that has served the Rolling Stones really well. So anyway, just uh, I figured throw this out there because I'm watching the Stones in Hyde Park and I'm thinking to myself, could be like, I don't know, the Steel Wheels tour, could be Tattoo You, could be all of these tours. It could just kind of all meld together because they just sound like they've always sounded. It's astonishing. So anyway, thanks for supporting the channel. One more time on this, my friend John Nixon, who sent me this again, page 99, a bit mellower than the Stones. Obviously, Toto, Steely Dan, Airplay, Chicago. Uh, it's so well done and it's ear candy. You put the headphones on and you're just going to be like, wow, it's just great. I didn't even know music like this was still being made. That's what I hear from people on that particular band. Um, Page 99, by the way, they borrow their name from Pages, the band Pages, and uh, Toto's 99. So shh, 
you know, melded together. All right, people, I'm done with this one. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you soon.